The latest top-end iPhone costs under $500 to manufacture, but retails for over $1,500. The new Apple Vision Pro, around $1,500 to make, but retails for over $4,500 at the top end. So with this, how is Apple able to charge 3x over the manufacturing cost for all their devices across the range? There are a few main reasons for this, but the biggest one being, like always, we continue to buy it no matter how much they charge. But of course, before everyone spends in the comments, there is much more to a device than the cost of components and assembly alone. Millions, and in some cases with Apple, billions, goes into the research, development, and patents of the device. And that, of course, has to be factored into the grand total of the device. The newest iPhone doesn't just appear out of thin air before the September keynote. Although sometimes it does feel this way, given how small and incremental the changes are, a lot still goes into these devices. But other companies put the same amount of R&D into their devices, and their profit margins still aren't nearly as good as Apple's. Take Samsung, for example, who's been making incredible phones recently. Their profit margins are only around 17%, while Apple sits at an impressive 66%. Both impressive products, but one just makes a heck of a lot more for the company than the other. Apple, at the end of the day, is incredibly good at trapping users into their ecosystem. And this makes people more lenient to spend more and overlook a little bit of corporate greed here and there, or a lot in this case. Apple has also done an incredible job in positioning themselves as a luxury company, much more so than Samsung, for example, which makes similar products, but does not have that same luxury appeal as Apple does with theirs. The price increases over the years have also been super strategic on Apple's part, as they slowly extend how much they could squeeze out the consumer. If we dial back the clock a few years, we have the iPhone X, which was the first smartphone to break the $1,000 price point. They saved this milestone for a more revolutionary device with impressive new screen technology, so while the price was daunting for some users, it made a little bit more sense and eased the transition into this new price point. And of course, notice where we are now, very quickly approaching $2,000 on the high end of iPhone devices. See where this is probably going? I'm sure that Apple is going to have something up their sleeve as we get to that milestone. And they're going to push a revolutionary new design, say something like a really good folding device or a Vision Pro tie-in in a smartphone in the years to come. In the end, it's all about conditioning the consumer to make them think that they are getting more out of their device than they really are. And Apple is a master at this. Today, we are just days away from the launch of the Vision Pro, a device that starts at $3,500. And many users have already submitted their pre-orders, despite not really knowing how capable the device is, as it hasn't really landed in the hands of the consumer or reviewers yet. So why? I think it's all because we are conditioned to assume that we're going to get an excellent product from Apple, no matter what it is, and even if no one has touched it yet. This is something that we don't really see to other companies. I myself am usually extremely skeptical when I'm about to buy a device, but when it's something from Apple, I usually just pull the trigger on it, understanding that they're not going to put out a subpar device. This grants them the ability to charge a lot more. It's that trust from the consumer. The line between what a device costs with all aspects of research, development, components is widening aggressively over the years. And despite many really compelling competitors, most users are sticking strongly with Apple through it all. Their ecosystem and the simplicity of it all is worth an immense amount to consumers, whether they realize it or not. Having all of your devices work together in harmony and seamlessly is something that takes a lot. And Apple knows this. And of course, accordingly, they charge you for it. For context in all of this, profit margins in tech usually sit around 10% across the industry. That's a rough number, but it is still six times less than what Apple gets on their flagship devices. This is something that took them a long time to work up to, but it is super insane that we still pay what we do given the true cost of these devices. But I'd like to hear what you all think about this. Do you think it's insane what Apple is doing with the profit margins, or does it kind of make sense given what we get in the end product and the research development that goes into it? Let's talk about it in the comments. I hope that you all like this video, and if you did, please do like and of course subscribe. 
It helps me out so much. And I look forward to talking to you all in the next video.